city for both of them. I got a I got to leave right at right after the show because I got my vet vet meeting. Yeah, my vet meeting. Yeah. Question. 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 Question.
going to be coming from Psalms number one. Psalms number one. I'll be reading from the live app, oh, King James Version. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law do he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his seasons. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in this congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. I read that entire number of Psalms, so may God have a blessing upon the reading of his word, the hearers and the doers. We'll ask Deacon Parrish if he'll lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, our Father, Lord, a few of your children have gathered together this Wednesday morning to say thank you, Lord, thank you for your goodness and for your grace. Lord, you saw fit to let us lay down last night and early this morning, we had a reasonable portion of health, clothed in our right mind, and we just want to pause and say thank you. God, we ask you to bless our church in a special way today. Bless our leader, keep him strong, and all the ministers that make up our teaching ministry, Lord, and help them day in and day out. Get stronger along the way. Lord, we have many on the sick list today. Many that are shut in today. We have bereaved families, Lord. We ask that you wrap your loving arms of protection around those. Bless our kids in a special way, Lord. Help them to know who Jesus is. And help them to have that desire to serve him as they move through life. And Lord, we're going to go into your word this morning. We ask you to take our pastor deep into your word. Let us learn and grow in the spirit that you would have us to learn. And that we may be able to go out and teach others the goodness of God. And Lord, we just thank you. You've been better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. You just keep on blessing us. Yes, sir. And we just thank you, Lord. These blessings we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I once was lost in sin.
come to the period of testimonies and praise reports. Do we have any testimonies and praise reports this morning? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I want to thank everybody for the phone calls and the prayers and the text messages. Everything looking good. My second doctor gave me some more medicine to take. So my eyes clean up good. My hands feel good. I'm still having problems with my feet. And my, the doctor was telling me that the CPAC machine, and I had already said it, the wind was at night blowing into my eyes. So I went to Saturday and got me the little mask to go across my eyes to keep the wind from blowing. I tried it last night. I can walk to my house in the black darkness <laughs> and never miss a beat. Mm. I woke up this morning, I couldn't see. I told my bed up. <laughs> I was in a turtle <laughs> on my back just spinning because I forgot to hide that thing on my face. I couldn't see. <laughs> I couldn't see. Normally, I just turn one side of my bed back and just get up in the morning and pull it over. I had to fix that whole bed because I, could, I couldn't see. <laughs> but I'm thankful for all y'all prayers and y'all calls. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Over here, bro. I got you. Good morning, saints, and uh, give um, honor to Pastor Nelson and those who are in charge. I didn't. I don't have a testimony or anything, but I do have a public service announcement. Amen. Some of you probably already are aware of, uh, you know, they've, they've taken bi uh, our Bibles out of their prayer out of the schools, and they've taken, you know, the name of Jesus out of our workplaces. And I just found out, and some of you probably already know this, but it was just mind-boggling for me, is that I know that we have different Bibles, right? They come in, you know, but most of the, the scriptures are all there, right? We think we are. And that's not true. I just found, and I have, you can see me after service. <laughs> I have uh, both of my Bibles here, and this one is the amplified one, and it's, there are scriptures that's missing <coughs> out of the Bible. So it just, uh, any, I'm not telling you which version to read, but I have one here that is the, uh, the life application, and of course we, we stand on our King James. However, uh, you can, if you have a different uh, version other than uh, King James, try to look up um, Matthew 17 and 21. Matthew 17 and 21. If you have a different version than the King James, it is missing out of this Bible. But when I go to my King James version, the 21st verse is here. So now they're to the point that they're taking verses out of our Bibles. So I just wanted to, for you all to be aware of that. Um, again, I'm not telling you which Bible to read, but just be mindful of which one you're reading. Amen? Amen. Especially if it's a Trump Bible. <laughs> Amen. Amen. $60. $60. $60. <laughs> okay, I do have something to say. Um, it's praise reports. Um, last month was rough. Uh, seemed like every which way I turned, there was something going on. Uh, somebody was in trouble. Somebody needed something. Somebody needed help. Uh, physical help. Uh, just something. Something was going on. phone call one night and one of my cousins in New Orleans, uh, her mom, uh, some things were going on with her health wise and everything and this is a cousin who had came out here for me when my sister passed and she came out when her mom was already going through some things and she came out to help support me. So I got off the phone with her and got online and bought a ticket and went down the next day. And 
um, one of my friends here asked me, she said, well, what are you going for? Are you going for a funeral or because you think she's about to die? Or I said, I don't know what I'm going for. Um, but if I can go and I'm just going to help support. I'm going, if, if, if all I can do is sweep the floor, do some dishes, whatever I can do. Just, I don't know what I'm going for. I don't know what I'm going into. I don't know what shape she's in or whatever, but I'm going because she needs help right now. And she takes care of her mom. Um, and I'm going to <coughs> help, you know, whatever I can go do. Um, the praise report is that when I got there, I found out that there were some things that I could do. Um, my son is a nurse, and so we were able to, in, when I went down there and in talking to her and finding out some things that she needed, um, and then some things started clicking in my head with my sister had a lot of breathing problems and things like that. You guys have to do things like you need to do. Um, so I started remembering some of the things that my sister went through and some of the machines she had and things like that. And so then I was talking to my son, and thank God he was off that day. <laughs> and so I could talk to him and say, okay, this is the type of machine she has. This is the oxygen she has. Um, isn't there something else that can be done for her? And so he told me some things to do, and we made some phone calls, and we got her some better therapy, things like that, so she could do something. And there's nothing else the doctor can do for her, um, and they've known that for a while. <coughs> but um, we were able to do some things to make it so she could have a better quality of life, and she wasn't stuck sitting there um, sucking on the oxygen and making a choice between that or the CPAP machine, that kind of thing. So we were able to integrate some things with her, um, CPAP machine, an oxygen tank, a pump supply, things like that, little things, stuff like that, and just able to talk to her and listen to her. And the reason I went was because I wanted to be able to talk to her while I could talk to her. And instead of waiting for a phone call to say that, you know, she was in a place in a, and at a point where she couldn't talk to me and we couldn't reminisce, couldn't laugh, things like that. And um, my main point is this. We used to be at a time where we supported each other and we took care of each other and we are no longer at that point. And we have to remember that when somebody calls you and tells you something, you have to move if you can. You have to move. You may not know what you can do. You may not know if you can do anything, but just the fact that I could go and do something, I didn't know what I could do. But I looked at my calendar and saw that I didn't have anything scheduled for the next few weeks. So I bought a one-way ticket. I said, I don't know when I'm coming. You know, and I went, and I didn't know what I could do, but we we we've gotten to the point where we don't care about each other anymore, and we have to remember that we are God's people, and we are supposed to care about each other. And I know this was family, but we're supposed to care about each other even if we aren't blood relatives. You know, and we have to remember that because that's what we have to do, and that's how we all support. So, you know, this was God moving in my little circle. But we have to remember that we all have little circles. And that's what keeps us up. And that's what keeps us moving. And that's what keeps us striving. <coughs> so, you know, this was God moving. And God moves in all our little circles. And this is what we have to do for each other. Amen. Reach out and touch someone.
appreciate it. Appreciate it. Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Come on, you can do better than that. God has been too good to us. Amen. Thank you, Brother Bennett. And uh, how many of you sending up your temper? Each and every, each and every day. Amen. 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 I love it when he sings them old songs. I'd be sitting back there trying to see who can remember them. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Well, let me highlight a couple of things. Let me highlight a couple of things, and, and then we'll uh, prepare to get into the word. How was your Easter? How was your Easter? Everybody have a good Easter? All right. <laughs> Uh-oh. All right, then. All right, all right. Yeah, one, 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 one of our members, I called to check on her, and she made a statement. She said, Reverend, she said, you got to be careful what you pray for. And so I said, what are you, what you talking about? She said, I prayed for grandbabies to come. She said, now they won't stop coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so all right. <laughs> got to be careful what you pray for. All right. Any, anyone else? Any other? Uh, Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Uh, Want to share what you did for Easter? Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you for your support uh, during our Easter um, extravaganza. Uh, I know 300. Uh, we did about 300, and uh, uh, the kids had a great time, and... Uh, uh, everybody uh, safe, and that's always a, a blessing. I want to thank the men of Calvary. They came and had their vests on, and uh, we parked cars over on our property across the street. And uh, So thank you. Uh, thank you, Calvary, for uh, making that investment. Amen. And being a blessing uh, not only to our children, but uh, to the uh, community and to the kingdom of heaven at large. Amen. Amen. And then our Easter service, uh, great, uh, great, great, two great services. And, and uh, we, we hadn't packed it out in a minute, but they were in here Sunday. They were in here Sunday. And uh, the blessing of that was it was our members. Amen. Amen. You know, so many times, yeah, yeah, you have crowds, and it ain't your people. It, w it was our people's. Yeah, it was our people's. So uh, thank you. And our kids, uh, they've done, uh, done a magnanimous job. Uh, you know, I'm always excited about that next generation uh, because when you see our young people, uh, you can't help but say as dark as this world looks, there's still a bright spot. Because there are some kids that haven't gone bad, haven't gone wrong. Amen. Trying to do the right thing. And so I thank God for them. And, you know, some of them just make you laugh, boy. Yeah, yeah. So we thank God for our Easter celebration um, here at uh, Calvary. Amen. Amen. All right, then. Um, let's see here. Um Calvary Young Women's Ministry is inviting young women between the ages of 17 to 25 to participate and be a part of this exciting ministry. Come and join us for a spiritual journey and a time of bonding, learning, and encouragement. And if you're interested, they have a sign-up sheet out in the foyer, and they will meet this coming Sunday after the uh, 1050 service and Sister Lenitra Smith, Sister Linda Jones, and Sister Tanya Howard uh, are in charge. And y'all know something we implemented at the old church, and it was going good, uh, fairly well, I guess, uh, our YES ministry, uh, which is an acronym for Young Enthusiastic Saints. And so that's what we're really trying to do 
uh, again, reinvigorate that young adult group. Amen. We got to get that young adult group uh, reinvigorated uh, and 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 active. So, uh, if y'all have uh, anyone that fits in that age group uh, and they ain't doing nothing, we certainly welcome you uh, to invite them to join us. All of our first Saturday meetings will take place this coming Saturday. Uh, 8 o'clock with our ministers, 9 o'clock with deacons and ministers and deacons' wives. The Lord's Supper will be observed in both services this coming Sunday. Communion cups are out there, so if you know of someone that uh, is uh, at home and and can't get out, uh, please, ma'am, please, sirs, take communion for them. Or if you're not going to be here We welcome you to take some uh, for you and your family. Want to be in prayer uh, for Sister Sherry Hill and family and the passing of her mother, Lily Mae Carter, and her services will be Friday, this coming Friday at uh, 11 a.m. from the Wheatley Heights First Baptist Church, and then also Sister Uh, Demetrius English and family and the passing of her mother, Sister Shirley Franklin. Sister Franklin's services will be this Saturday at 11 from the Tristone Baptist Church. Also, we want to be in prayer for Sister Melanie Benson and family and the passing of her brother, Michael Shepard. Services will be also this Friday at 11 from Carter Taylor Williams. And lastly, we want to be in prayer for Sister Margaret Weeks and the passing of her husband, and those services are pending. Uh, Also, let's be in prayer for Sister Lavoris Steele. Just got word that she has been hospitalized at St. Luke uh, Baptist Hospital, Uh, so we want to keep her uh, in prayer. She had surgery on her back. And then uh, have a thank you card. Thank you so much. It's hard to put into words how grateful I am. I only hope you know just how much I mean when I say thank you for everything. And this, again, is from the Lampkin family. All right, all right. Any birthdays, birthdays, anybody celebrating birthday, birthdays? All right, right, Sister Powell. All right then. All right, what you got a celebration? You, you. <laughs> Sister Banks didn't like that boy. You you'd have made her day. She done. I don't care what I say after that. It ain't going nowhere. <laughs> wee. Lord, I I that that's what I get for asking. <laughs> <laughs> the Martin that that wasn't a pal that wasn't a, that was a Martin that was a Martin answer yeah I love teasing her 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 mother boy lived to be, what ninety plus years old and and uh, I mean she came out of surgery talking noise I mean Lord Hammer they had amputated her leg and she was talking noise ninety plus years I'm like what. All right, then. Well, we pray that you have a blessed day on your birthday with your boyfriend. (laughs) Now, is it the one I know about? (laughs) Now. (laughs) You want to mess with me? (laughs) Yeah. All right, then. Y'all know we like having fun around here. All right, then. All right. Any, uh, (laughs) see, Sister Banks is still over there snickering. She gone for the Bible study. <laughs> All right. Any um, anyone celebra- celebrating wedding anniversaries? Any wedding anniversaries? All right. All right. All right. Well, happy birthday, Sister Powell, and and we pray that it will be a um, blessed uh, day for you. Amen. All right. Uh, let's get into the Word of God. We are. Still in our Bible study series, uh, growing closer and deeper to God. 
uh, our theme verse. Anybody remember that? Our theme verse, 2 Peter 3 and 18. 2 Peter 3 and, and 18. But let's see here. I got to find it. <laughs> and, and, and thank you for that, Sister um, Hurt, about the Bible. Uh, I'm going to look at that, uh, but uh, what comes to my mind uh, readily is just like there are misprints and other things that may be a misprint. Yeah, yeah, because uh, I've had a couple Bibles with some mi misprints. You know, I, I, uh, when I was young, you know, I liked to carry them little bitty Bibles. Now I can't see, you know, so, it, you know, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting the big print Bibles now, you know, but... Uh, <laughs> I'd get them little print Bibles, and, and sometimes I've, I've found some words and stuff, you know, omitted. So, yeah, but I'm going to check that out. Uh, but I think verse 2 Peter 3, 18, but grow in what? Grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. All right, and we've been looking at uh, busy but barren, busy but barren, and we're in uh, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, 38 through 42. Now it came to pass as they went, they entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha that received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, doest thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. And so we're talking about busy but barren. Let's go to God. God, our Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you, O oh God, for the activity of our limbs, the fact that we're clothed in our right minds. Thank you for another year of life uh, for those that are celebrating birthdays. Uh, we lift up those that are on our sick list. We pray, oh God, for those that are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. We know that thou art with them. We pray now that as we study your word, you would give us insight understanding help me to say what needs to be said but keep me from saying what I shouldn't say I ask all this in the name of Jesus amen, amen. amen. How, how did everybody survive I mean we had Easter on Sunday and a storm on Monday everybody do well from the storm yeah everybody's houses and cars and yeah, boy, it came, uh, you know, and all, you know, it came and all you could do is just lay there and pray. You know, you know, uh, I looked out there and it was coming down. Our dog started barking, you know. Arr! I said, Marcy, if I let you out now, you're going to be mad at me because that, that hell will tear you up. <laughs> yeah, well, all right then, all right. Well, busy but, but barren. In our text, uh, just to kind of review, Jesus is at the home of some of his closest friends. He's at the home of Martha with her brother Lazarus and her sister Mary. And, and uh, Martha is the leader of the family because the Bible tells us in verse 38 that they are literally at her home. So Mary and Lazarus 
Jesus uh, and Jesus were guests in Martha's home. And, and the text says that Martha was working. She was busy. She was serving. But Mary was worshiping. And, and, and I, I, I want to just make sure we emphasize that again. Martha was the what? Worker. Mary was the worshiper. And, and the question that we started out with and I just raise again today is this. Which one are you? Because all of us are either a Martha or a Mary. All of us are either a worshiper or a worker. Which one are you? And, 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 and both of them, the worker and the worshiper, both have strifts and weaknesses. There's some good things about the worshiper, but there's also some bad things about the worshiper. That there's some good things about the worker, but there's also some what? Bad things about the worker. Uh, so, 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 so which one are you? A amen. A and I bring that up because the great problem in the church is people like Martha can't understand people like Mary. Oh, y'all didn't get it like that. Great problem in the church is, is the worshipers don't always understand the workers. And the workers don't always understand the worshipers. Amen. And, and it's really right there in the text. It's right there in the text. Um, uh, Mary drove Martha crazy. <laughs> right there in verse 40. Mary literally drove Martha crazy. And I think I, I, I got to drop this in. Spiritually, Martha isn't less spiritual than Mary because she is a worker and Mary's a worshiper. And Mary isn't more spiritual than Martha. That kind of sets the tone. But, but know that Martha was mad at who? She was mad at Mary. Amen. And, and so from that, we, 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 we mentioned two spiritual truths. We, we mentioned two spiritual truths. We said, number one, that being must always proceed doing. Being must always proceed doing. And the point is, we've got to be right before we can do right. We got to be right before we can do right. Second thing uh, we said was, no amount of service will make us spiritual. Amen. No amount of service will make us spiritual. And, and, and we have to be so careful in the church because we think when a person joins church and we put them to work that they're going to grow. But just because you're working don't mean you're growing spiritually. Amen. So no amount of service will make us spiritual. And then we looked at our points. The first thing we looked at uh, was the symptoms of a busy but barren life. The symptoms of a busy but barren life. And these are some red flags. Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, these are some red flags. We said the first symptom of a busy but barren life is fatigue. Fatigue. And we said that, that, that it's not just about being tired, but you're really exhausted. 
where you go to bed tired and you wake up <laughs> tired. And when we look at our text, Martha was getting tired. I mean, she was running, but she was still running behind schedule. She had a checklist of things to do, but she wasn't getting everything done. She was pushing forward, but she really wasn't going nowhere. And that can cause you fatigue. Now, now what we call that today is this, burnout. Burnout. Get that in your spirit. Burnout. And I asked the question, uh, do you remember why the Lord made the Sabbath? So you would rest. Amen. And that's why I don't get mad at people when they come to church and go to sleep on my sermon. <laughs> they need the rest. Amen. I ain't mad at them. Amen. I just preach right on. Because apparently they need the. <laughs> Fatigue. Then we said a second symptom is what? Fear. Fear. Look, look at verse 40 again. Martha is saying, Lord, I can't get all this work done if somebody. Don't help me. I'm worried that, that, that everything that needs to be done will not get done if somebody doesn't help me. And look how Jesus responds to her in verse 40. He says, you're, 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 you're troubled. You're, 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 you're worried about a lot of things. And my question to you, my question to you is, is what are you careful and troubled about? What are you careful and troubled about? We've got to make sure, going back to that first point of fatigue, because when you're dealing with fatigue and fear, if you're not careful, you can either blow out or blow up. And this new generation, they call it anxiety attacks. Most of y'all in here are older than me. Did you ever hear such? <laughs> if I want to help me. But, but now... They have anxiety attacks. And, and, and that means you can get so stressed that you start dealing with medical problems, sweating, heart racing, shortness of breath. Here's a good one, diarrhea. <laughs> Amen. So, so you, you deal with Fatigue, you deal with fear, but then thirdly, you deal with frustration. Martha was frustrated. When you look at this text, she was frustrated. She was frustrated, watch this, first with her Savior. She was frustrated with Jesus. And we've got to be so careful that we don't start blaming God for our problems, for our pains, and for our predicaments. Got to be so careful. So, so she was frustrated with her Savior, but then watch this. She was frustrated with her sister. Amen. She was frustrated with her sister. And she wasn't just frustrated with her. She was mad at her. She wouldn't even call her by name. She was mad. 
But not only was she frustrated with her savior and her sister, but thirdly, she was frustrated in service. And, 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 and the symptoms of being busy but barren is, is you can be in the service of the Lord and be frustrated. Amen. Amen. You can be in the service of the Lord and still be frustrated. But then number two, you got to look at the source of a life that is busy but barren. The source of a life that is busy but barren. And when we look at the source of a life that's busy but barren, two things come up. Number one, distraction. Say that with me. Distraction. The real essence of our Christian life is not to be religious, but it's really to have a relationship with Jesus. Y'all got to get that. The real essence of the Christian life isn't for us to be religious, but to have a relationship with Jesus. And a lot of us, we're religious, but we don't have a relationship. Because, you know, you can religiously get dressed every day, but that don't make, the, make you saved. Am I in the room? You religiously eat every day, but that don't make you saved. Oh, here's a good one. You religiously take your medication every day, but that don't make you saved. So, so it isn't about being religious because you can be religious and still lost. And there are going to be a whole lot of religious folk that bust hell wide open. It's not about being religious. It's about having a what? relationship with Jesus. Jesus has got to be the source of your joy. Jesus got to be the source of your power. Jesus got to be the source of your wisdom. And if we get distracted from Jesus, even for a second, we can mess up, we can crash, we can fall. It's kind of like trying to make coffee in the morning. You, you, you got the coffee grinds. You got the filter. You got the water. You got the coffee maker. And you can put it all together, but if the coffee maker isn't plugged into the energy source, you won't have no coffee. And that's the same way it is with us as believers We've got to be plugged into the, the right source, the power source. Now, here's a question for you. Here's a question for you. Here's a question for you. Are you letting things distract you from Jesus? I say that because in the church, you can get messed up. Are you letting things distract you from Jesus? Because really, that's what happened to Martha. Look at this. It, it messed me up when I really kept reading this. Martha had Jesus sitting in her living room. But she was walking around worried about dirty dishes, dirty laundry, and cooking a big meal. And, and so, so my question to you is, what are the things that can distract us from Jesus? 
A amen. What are the things that can distract us from Jesus? And I, I, I can throw out a couple and you can add uh, your list to it, but duties. Some of us, we got responsibilities, and, and, and if we're not careful, some of those responsibilities can keep us from really seeing Jesus. Some of us are dealing with all kinds of decisions, and some of those decisions can keep us from seeing D Jesus. Some of us are dealing with deadlines, and some of those deadlines can keep you from seeing Jesus. But here's a good one. Here's a good one. Here oh, here's a good one. Draining people. Don't say amen. Draining people. Because some people don't fill your cup, but they. Y'all might as well go and say amen. Some, now everybody got call ID. And some folk, when you see their number and their name. <laughs> I'm in here. I'm going to let you think about that for a moment. When you see their name and their number, you just. <laughs> Amen. They can distract you from seeing Jesus. So my point is, we allow all kinds of things and people to distract us from Jesus. And watch this. It really even happens on Sunday morning in worship. You can get distracted. That, that's why I preach with notes. Because I've seen so much come through on Sunday morning, I forget what I'm supposed to preach about. Y'all might as well go and say amen. All you that ain't said amen, let me help you. You let a sister come in with her skirt a little too short. You're going to spend more time talking about, ooh, she, she need more material. <laughs> Don't let her have a, you know, a figure, you know. Don't let her have a figure. Then you're going to talk about the, 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 the skirt being too short. And, and, and the body be, oh, Lord, have mercy. That, that, that's literally why I sit right here. I, I used to sit in the pulpit, and then I'd see people coming in, and, and then I'd see how the ushers and greeters would look at them. And, 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 and I, <laughs> Anybody want to wave at me if you know what I'm talking about? And, and, and all you brothers that ain't waved at me, shame on you because you know you get distracted. You see it and can't do nothing with it, but it distracts you. <laughs> yeah, you be looking. And man, look at it, look at it. He say, dick, not diggity dog. Now we got two dogs running around in the front <laughs> But you can literally be in worship. Have, have you, have, has that ever happened to you? I mean in worship, in church. And get distracted. Amen. But, but, <laughs> but, but, but then, but then number two, number two, number two. A distorted perspective, a distorted perspective. We can get so caught up and busy doing good things that we forget about the best things. We can be doing good things, but are we really doing the best things? Because again, look, Martha has Jesus Right there in her house. And she's washing dishes instead of worshiping Jesus. Gonna say amen. She washing dishes 
instead of worshiping Jesus, she was doing some good things, but they may not have been the what? Best things. A amen. She, 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 she washing dishes instead of worshiping Jesus. She neglected the best things for the good things. She, she was doing good. Amen. But doing good does always mean we're doing the best that we ought to be doing. Third thing I want to look at, and, and we'll wrap this little lesson up. If y'all give me about five minutes. I want to look at the solution to a life that is busy but barren. The solution to a life that is busy but barren. We got to really look at what Jesus said in verse 42. Got to really look at what Jesus said in verse 42. He says, but one thing is needful. And Mary have chosen that what? Good part. Which shall not be taken away from her. Martha was focused on good things, but not on the best things. And it was robbing her of joy, peace, happiness. And so she was walking around with the master in her house, but she was mad. She literally lost focus. And so Jesus says, and that messed with me. He didn't say three things. He didn't say two things. He said, one thing was needed. And, and, and he says, Martha, one thing is, is needed to fix the problem. So my brothers and sisters, if you feel busy but barren, there is one thing that can fix it. There is one solution, and his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. He is the solution. He is the answer. He's the remedy. Now, Mary in our text, she understood that the most important thing in life is to get right and worship and honor Jesus. See, it's not the service for the Lord, but it's our relationship with the Lord that's most important. And a lot of us, we need to learn what Mary learned, and that is falling in love with Jesus is the best thing that we can do. Well, let me give you three quick things. No, no, number one, number one, the solution is, is number one, we got to adore Jesus. Say adore Jesus. It's right there in verse 39. Look where Mary was. Mary was at Jesus' feet. So to keep from becoming busy but barren, we need to draw aside and sit at Jesus' feet. When was the last time you just sat and adored Jesus? I think sometimes we, we get so busy that we don't take time to just adore Jesus. Now watch this, watch this. When I looked at the text, Sister Booz, I got messed up. She's sitting at his feet. And I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie. I got a foot fetish. You know, I, I don't play with nobody's feet. And I don't want nobody playing with mine. Amen. Hey, 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 Y'all come on. <laughs> Sister LaFrid back there row. <laughs> I got a problem. But the text says she sat at Jesus' 
feet. And then Sister Hurt, I start thinking about back in them days, they walked everywhere they went, so his feet had to be good and dirty. Come on, help me here. But the text says she sat at his feet. And I just said, ooh, Mary. But, but, but when I really thought about it, she sat down at his feet so she could look up to Jesus. She sat down at his feet so she could look. Does that make any sense? So she could look up. At Jesus. Then I thought about Martha. The problem with Martha was she was walking around. She couldn't look at Jesus. All she could do is glance at Jesus. So you got to adore him. Secondly, you got to be attentive to Jesus. Say, be attentive to Jesus. She sat and listened. To what Jesus had to say. I mean after all he was the word of God. So she was getting the word from the word. She was listening. To what Jesus said. And what Jesus said. Was much more important. Than listening to what others were saying. Amen. Amen. Listen, we cannot hear from Jesus when we are constantly attentive to our own agenda or an agenda somebody else has set for us. Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we all need a word from the Lord. We all need a word from the Lord. We need a fresh word from the Lord. Amen. We need a personal word from the Lord. And we need a relevant word from the Lord. A amen. And that's why Wednesday in the word is so important because you get it on Sunday. But you deal with distractions on Monday and Tuesday. By Wednesday, you need another. Am I in the room? By Wednesday, I need another word because I, I, I didn't dealt with traffic. I didn't dealt with mean folk. I, I, I didn't dealt with my family. So by Wednesday, I need a. Now, some of y'all ain't willing to be real in here. By Wednesday, if I don't get a word, I may have a word. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, and, and if, 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 if we need to know that Jesus is speaking, but here's the question. That's it. Somebody going to help me. Are we listening? Last thing, and I'll let you go. Last thing, I'll let you go. We've got to abide in Jesus. Say that. we got to abide in Jesus. When we're in Jesus and we're really abiding in him, we can draw strength, we can draw life, we can draw resources from him. And, and what does it mean to abide in him? I'm glad you asked. It means you got to spend some time with him. Amen. You've got to spend some time with him. We, we, but, but, but watch this, watch this. Many of us will spend a little time with him, but also you got to be willing to trust him. And, and, and anybody want to help me when I say this? Trusting him can be a little... Anybody want to help me? Don't, don't act like you just, you know, Lord, I, I got, you know, I'm, I'm, I trust you. No. 
it, it, amen. We, we've got to spend time with him. We've got to trust him. Uh, and, 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 and when we spend time with him and when we trust him, we won't be barren, but we'll be fruitful. So, so I'm done. I'm done. But I think what this lesson teaches us is this. We got to do what Mary did. Get close to Jesus. Yeah. We got to do what Mary did. Get close to Jesus. Amen. Any comments or questions? Any comments or questions? Any comments? Yes, ma'am. I know you were just back there rolling. <laughs> Only Sister Leffridge. Only Sister Leffridge. Yeah. I, I'll give you a better one. I just, I was talking, uh, y'all know uh, during Easter, you know, we have the seven last sayings and uh, communion and all that. Well, one of my buddies called me and said uh, that one of his friends, and he was really asking me what I thought. He said, man, and, and so-and-so had a foot washing service. And, and I said, man, that's in the Bible. I said, but I, I, I ain't practicing it. And uh, I, I told him, I think I told y'all that story. They, they invited me to do a men's retreat down in Corpus. And it was a, a mixed congregation. And uh, 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 after I spoke, I didn't know that they wanted us to wash people's feet. Uh, so after I spoke, you know, and, and, and it was a mixed congregation, you know, blacks, whites, Hispanics, and uh, uh, all men. So after I spoke, they said, and now we're going to have the pastors wash the men's feet. And it took me a minute. It took me a minute. It took me a minute. Thank God I didn't have on my suit. It took me a minute, and, and so I went, you know, down, and they had the brothers sitting there. God, my witness, it was, it was a Caucasian brother. He had on boots and thick white tube socks. And it seemed like when I got to his seat, you know, get ready to wash his feet. Seemed like he started twickling his toes or something. So you know. Ooh wee. Sister Neil. I, I did it. God gave me grace. But all the way to the back to my hotel room, I didn't say nothing. And when I got there, I turned the shower on as hot as I and Carla said, baby, are you all right? Are you all right? That foot washing stuff, Lord have mercy. All right, all right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All right, all right. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, that was beautiful. Yes, that was beautiful. Yeah, go Pope. <laughs> Go Pope. All right, all right. Um, <laughs> all right, y'all have a blessed rest of the day. Uh, we welcome you to worship. There's a basket in the rear uh, for you to worship by way of giving. I'm going to ask Pastor uh, Hardeman to come and lead us in our closing prayer, blessing of offering and benediction. Look to see you on Sunday. Boy, I got a good one Sunday. I've been wrestling with this thing. 
Sunday, I think I want to try to talk about how to deal with mean people. Yeah, yeah. And all of us know some mean people. And, and by the way, this ain't a sermon about marriage either. Because <laughs> some people say the meanest person I know is the one I live with. <laughs> let's stand. Let's go. I'll pass it something else, isn't it? <laughs> I like that. Go Pope. <laughs> Here we go. Father God, how we love you and how we thank you for this fellowship. How we can come together as believers and feast on your word as well as feast on each other. Thank you, Lord, for this man of God who you have sent this way, whom you have planted here at 6142 FM 78. Thank you, Lord, for Pastor Nelson. Continue to grant him wisdom and insight that he may impart those words to us and we can apply it to our lives and then share it with someone else. Bless the offerings that we've received. Help us to be good stewards and good managers. Keep us in your care as we depart from here. This we pray in the precious name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Glory.